Do you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? Send us an email with your story for a chance of it being featured on Weird World. Helen Noonan from Atlanta, Georgia, was in her early 40s when she decided to get married again to a man called Brian Smith from Memphis, Tennessee. However, she was concerned that things were moving too fast, fearing that he had not fully recovered from the death of his first wife, Marion, who had died the previous year, but felt she was ready to take the plunge again. Brian was a businessman with a job that regularly took him all over the United States. After moving in together, Brian had arranged to come home early for the first few days to ensure that her first days at her new home went smoothly, but after that she'd probably only see him three days a week. Brian's previous wife had been dead for over one year, but he had not removed any of her clothing or belongings and it felt as if she was still around. Marin's hairbrush and makeup were still sitting on the dressing table and when she opened the drawers to put in her own clothes, she found them full of Marin's lingerie and the wardrobe was full of her coats, dresses and shoes. That night as they were climbing into bed, she found Marion's slippers beside the bed and quickly threw them in the closet. Helen realised that she would have to get rid of his previous wife's clothing herself as she needed space for her own clothing. Possibly the most disturbing item was a photograph of Brian and Marion that stood in a display case, so Marion took it down and placed it in the drawer and would talk to Brian about it later. After ordering some boxes, Helen started the arduous task of packing up Marion's belongings, starting with the hairbrushes and makeup. After emptying the dressing table, she started on the closet where she slowly moved the dresses, followed by the skirts, blouses, shoes and hats. On a few occasions, Helen was tempted to try on some of the clothing, as they were not only expensive but fitted her perfectly, and decided to keep some of them. There was one particular dress that she liked that came with a belt, but when it came to tying the belt around her waist, she found herself lifting the belt to her neck and proceeded to pull it tighter and tighter until she was unable to breathe. She felt her hands were no longer her own and had to fight to gain control until she eventually had enough strength to pull it away and throw it on the floor. After quickly taking off the dress, her own dress was no longer on the bed, and a short time later found it in a crumpled mess under the bed. That night she discussed Marion's clothes with her husband, who told her to take care of everything because he had never known what to do with them, but requested that she save any old photos. Later that evening as she was walking towards the bed, she was horrified to see Marion's slippers beside the bed again, and picked them up and placed them into a box. The following day, Helen got up early in the afternoon, still exhausted because she'd had a sleepless night. As she dragged herself out of bed, she again found Marion's slippers beside the bed. After showering and dressing, she picked up the slippers and threw them in the rubbish bin. Helen was now questioning her own sanity, thinking that maybe she got up during the night and placed the slippers beside the bed. As she was clearing away some dishes, she noticed dark shadows and started to feel weak and fell to her knees. Her stomach felt queasy and she was engulfed with dizziness and panic and she had the sensation that she was falling. She managed to crawl into the living room and sat down in a chair and tried to compose herself. She was suddenly alerted to the sound of a slamming door and believed that her husband had come home. She checked her watch and was shocked that it was now seven o'clock. She'd been asleep for five hours and had not prepared the evening meal. Her husband shrugged everything off, suggesting they go out for dinner. As her best clothing was in the laundry, her husband suggested she wear one of Marin's dresses. It was while they were sitting at the dinner table and had just finished the main course when Helen felt a tight feeling across her chest with the pain slowly increased during dessert and was now very painful. She felt as if the dress was actually crushing her and felt like a great weight was pressing into her. She was now finding it difficult to breathe and was feeling extremely hot, making matters worse. After they arrived home, she quickly recovered after taking off the dress. A few days later, she was feeling listless and decided to go to bed early. But she had a disturbing night's sleep, with nightmares and the sound of muffled voices. The following day, she was a complete wreck. One thing she did remember from the previous night was the vision of Marion standing over the bed, as if she was still alive. She later asked Tanya, the maid, what Marion was like, 
Tanya said that she was an extremely possessive woman who would get very jealous if Brian had looked at other women. The following weekend appeared to go well, but on the Monday, all hell broke loose where Helen was awoken to the sound of closet doors crashing and swinging back and forth. Helen walked towards the closet and found that yet again her clothing had been strewn across the room and her makeup was on the floor. All the drawers on the dressing table were open and the lingerie had been taken out and scattered about the room. Then everything became icy cold and the door stopped swinging. Knowing that it was Marion's doing, she screamed out to be left in peace. Over the next few weeks, Helen would again feel the symptoms of a high temperature, dizziness and pain. After having medical checkups, she was found to be in perfect health. Helen came to the conclusion that problems only arose when her husband was away and was peaceful when he was at home. But within 50 minutes of him departing for work, all manner of poltergeist activity would erupt with loud banging coming from downstairs, but would stop when she went to check. Dark shadows started to appear again and were now following her around the house, and if she laid down, the bedroom door would slam closed and could not be opened. For the next three days, when Helen was by herself, she was tormented by a sinister force, for every day there was the strong smell of what she knew was one of Marion's perfumes. The odour was all around the house, but was particularly strong in the bedroom and living room. On many occasions, she was forced to sleep in the spare room because the door in the master bedroom would not open. When she went to bed, the lamp would not turn on, but the moment she laid down, the light would turn on by itself. On entering the closet, her clothes were again strewn across the floor, and when she woke up, clothing and makeup were scattered on the bedroom floor. When she discussed the matter with Tanya, she was not surprised as she'd actually started to see Marion's ghost. One day Tanya arrived at the house and found Helen locked in one of the bedrooms, but she herself had no trouble opening the door. Tanya later brought in a medium to help quiet Marion's spirit, but they failed to quell her. Helen had the house blessed on two occasions, but Marion remained stubborn. Helen then brought in another medium who assured both Helen and Tanya that everything was now safe. But later that night, light bulbs exploded. Helen was desperate and tried two more clairvoyants, but nothing could rid the house of Marion's vindictive force and she was determined not to be moved on. Finally, she admitted to Brian what had been happening in the house, but he was extremely dubious and surely if she'd come back from the grave, he would know about it. However, he could see the distress in his wife and maid and would seek help from someone qualified. But the disturbances were now starting to get malicious and dangerous. One day when Tanya arrived at the house, she found that all of the globes had shattered. The vacuum cleaner would not work, so the two women were forced to clean up the glass by themselves. Furniture would roll across the floor, striking Helen, where Tanya was also becoming a target of Marion's vindictiveness. Every day Helen was now picking up clothing and makeup off of the floor, and this time it was happening when Brian was present. All electrical appliances were now failing, and loud noises could be heard throughout the house both day and night. Power would be off all day, but would turn on when Brian came home. One day there was a knock at the door, and when Helen opened it, she found Marion standing there smiling in a fur coat. She quickly slammed the door and froze in fear, terrified of another knock and not believing what she had just seen. A few days later, she opened the door again, only to find Marion staring back at her. After that, she refused to answer the door. Brian then contacted the Institute for Psychical Research, where investigators came and confirmed the hauntings. As the team were investigating, chairs would be thrown in front of them. The terrible events were so bad now that qualified exorcists had to be called in to restore peace and order. Miraculously, the exorcism seemed to work, and the vindictive spirit of Marin was finally vanquished.